Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having a good day. I hope your parents and all your family is safe and sound. Uh, don't go outside. Stay home. Keep your pa pa family safe and your parents safe as well. All right. Now, today we're going to do a little bit of revision. I hope that is okay with you all. Uh, it's not a lot. This may seem to, a lot to you, but right now what I'm going to show you is a sample of uh, bonding. Uh, I'm going to show you bonding in sodium sulfide. Uh, since you've already done bonding, you will know what kind of bonding this one is. Sodium sulfide undergoes ionic bonding and I have shown you an example of what is the chemical formula of sodium sulfide that is Na2S. You may not get this in your exams but uh, you will need to know this in the future. So just giving you a sample of what sodium sulfide actually looks like. Now you already know the electronic configuration of sodium sulfide. Uh, the first shell has two electrons, the second shell has uh, eight electrons and the last shell has one electron. And this one sodium bonds with sulfur here. Sulfur is, uh, sulfur is a non-metal here and uh, it has two electrons in its first shell, eight electrons in its second shell and six electrons in its uh, third shell. And you know all, um, all atoms w want to achieve eight electrons in the last shell and here sulfur has only six. Now a way to achieve uh, eight electrons here would be to gain an electron from sodium. Now sodium has only one. So what should it do? It should take, uh, sulfur will take two electrons from two sodium atoms. Now if you can see here, this is how you actually show bonding in sodium sulfide. So what you have here is uh, the first shell remain as it is, the second shell remains as it is and you can see you don't have the last shell here. So what happened to the last shell and the electron in the last shell? Those, that particular electron went off to sulfur. Now sulfur has two electrons whereas sodium has only one electron. So where did the other electron come from? And you can see here I put two sodium, two before the bracket here. And the reason is to show that there are two sodium atoms giving away two electrons to one atom of sulfur. Now another thing that you may have noticed here is a plus sign. Now why is there a plus sign over here? Now um, the explanation is a bit longer but right now what I'm going to give you is uh, because it has given away an electron, uh, this is how you can give an example. This is how you show number of protons. What is the number of protons for sodium and what is the number of electrons in sodium? So if you look at sodium, sodium in the periodic table looks like this. This is the number of protons, so 11. What is the number of electrons? Here the number of electron is 11, but here the number of electron is 10. So 2 plus 8, 10. You are left behind with plus 1. That is the reason you have a plus 1 charge over here. The same, the same rule applies to sulfur as well. Now sulfur in the periodic table looks like this. So the proton number here is 16, number of electrons 16. What, what happens here? Number of protons, protons is 16 but electrons is 18. So what you have here, because electrons are negatively charged, protons are positively charged, you have minus 2 and that is the reason why you have a minus 2 charge over here and this is another this is another way you can also show the bonding here this shows the electronic configuration plus the fact that sodium has lost an electron one sodium atom has lost an electron and here as well uh, this is the entire configuration of sulfur 2 8 8 and minus 2 over here shows that sodium has gained sorry sulfur has gained two electrons per atom Okay, so I have given you this example for a particular reason and the reason being there will be work for you to do later and if you go 
to the right hand side if you go to the right hand side of the board you can see from A to O I have given a list of compounds. Now I have not mentioned what kind of compounds they are, I have just, just mentioned that they are um, compounds. So what you are going to decide by yourself is uh, what kind of bonding they undergo, ionic or covalent. Depending on that you are going to use similar example of what I have done over here on the board and show bonding in these compounds. So your final result should look something like this. All the answers that you write for sodium fluoride, calcium fluoride, magnesium fluoride and the rest from A to O, uh, you are going to show, um, you are going to show what they look like before and what they look after the bonding has taken place. So you have to show the inner shells, the outer shell and the fact that the, uh, they have different, uh, one has a dot and the other has a cross. And what you are going to show afterwards, you are going to show the electronic configuration for both, of, for both the elements and afterwards, after the bonding, you are going to show uh, the charges. Uh, in ionic bonding you are going to show the charges and of course as you know in covalent bonding they do not have any charge so it is not necessary for you to do that but you are going to follow a similar example for all the compounds that are there on the right hand side of the board to show what kind of bonding that, uh, takes place in these. Thank you.